Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm checking out some Beta FPV Express LRS components. Thank you, Beta FPV, for sending this to me. Beta FPV sent me their Flat Antenna Express LRS receiver. The more traditional receiver, this is called a Nano RX. It's about the same size as Crossfire and it has an external antenna. And they sent me a module. This is their Nano RF module. And what I want to do with this module, I want to see if I can fit this module inside my Tango 2 Pro. Very similar to what I did with the Happy Model module. And I know the Happy Model module is out of stock most of the time. So I'm going to see if I can use this instead. This one goes up to 500 milliwatts instead of 250, which is what the Happy Model does. I'm going to start by testing this receiver. This is the flat antenna receiver, which means that this little tiny red thing, that is the antenna. Antenna. There is no external antenna, so it's a very self-contained unit. And I'm going into this testing with no real expectations of this performing very well because I did test something similar from Happy Model last winter. And that thing, yeah, it worked fine, but it did not perform very well. So I'm going to expect that this is probably going to do the same thing. In the package, we have a user manual QR code. We have wires. Of course, the receiver itself, you could see it's quite small, even smaller than my fingernail. And then they give you two pieces of shrink tubing. This is the Happy Model EP2 receiver. This is what I tested last year. And that tower-like structure, the black with the gold wires on there, that's the antenna. The Happy Model EP2 is 0.48 grams, whereas the Betaflight is a little tiny bit heavier at 0.5 grams. What I like about the Betaflight receiver is the fact that the antenna is more flat, which means less susceptible to damage in crashes and things, but we'll have to see how that performs. To test the Betaflight flat antenna receiver, I'm gonna use this. This is my new build that I started this morning. It is a Quadmulla Siren F3 split. This is my Vista build. I have exact same quad with the same components, but the O3 I've been flying for quite a while. And the receiver is all installed. The wiring is no different than the Happy model. You have your ground, your five volts, your TX, and then your RX. So it's reassuring that it uses the same wiring pattern. And I installed this the same place I had the Happy model EP2, not in the ideal spot because the antenna will get covered up by the carbon top deck and the bottom deck and the Vista and so forth. But this is the same place I had the other receiver. And I want to be able to do a, um, as scientific of a test as you really can on a receiver. So now we're going to open up our beta flight configurator. We're going to connect over to our flight controller. We're going to go under ports and we're going to make sure the UART that we connected this receiver to. In my case, it was UART4, so R4 and T4. And I'm going to make sure to turn on the serial RX on that particular UART. Everything else is left as defaults. I will click on save and reboot. Once that is done, I'm going to go under the receiver tab and I'm going to set my receiver as a serial via UART receiver mode. And under the receiver provider, I'm going to select Crossfire. ELRS uses Crossfire as its actual protocol and provider. So we're going to select that here. We're going to turn on telemetry and very important, we're going to make sure to select the proper channel map. So by default, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see here um, aileron, elevator, throttle, and yaw. If you do it this way, if you forget to change this, you're going to get throttle and your quad's going to go left and right instead of going up and down. So we need to change this over to JR and then we're going to click on save. At this point in time, you are done with beta flight. Before we start to fly the receiver, we want to go ahead and do a firmware upgrade to the latest Express LRS firmware. And also we want to go ahead and set our bind phrase. So all you got to do is plug in the battery and then wait about 60 seconds until the receiver enters Wi-Fi mode. And you can tell that it's in Wi-Fi mode because that little blue light will start to flash very quickly. Once that happens, just come to your computer and look at the Wi-Fi networks. You'll see an Express LRS RX. Just connect to that. And if it asks you for a password, the password is Express LRS. And then once connected to the Wi-Fi, you can navigate to 10.0.0.1 in your web browser, and that will give you access to the web interface for the receiver. But what we want to do is we want to open up the Express LRS configurator. So go ahead and grab the latest version. We'll upgrade to the latest version of Express LRS. We'll select our device. So we know it's a beta FTV 2.4. 
and we know that it is a light RX. From here, you can set up your binding phrase and some additional settings. You can see what I've got here. And then all we want to do is flip it over to Wi-Fi. Then you see it brings up the 10.0.0.1. And then all we got to do is click on Flash. Then it'll go ahead and compile the firmware and start to flash the receiver. And then once complete, we're going to wait until the blue LED starts to flash again on the receiver. Once that happens, we are done. And we can see that this does say success, so we are good. For testing purposes, I'm back to my usual field. I know this field very well and what kind of signal strength I can get. I want you to look at a couple of elements on the OSD. First one is link quality, which is a percentage out of 100. Then we have the signal strength. And then finally, we have the output power of the transmitter. And right now I'm doing a perimeter flight just to see how the signal strength is. I am seeing a couple of warnings here for signal strength. I have my warning set at minus 102 dBm, which is 10 dBm lower than the limit. So the limit for 150 hertz, which is what I'm running here, that five means 150 hertz, is minus 112. At minus 112, we are kaput. So I've got that set a little bit higher. So as I'm flying the perimeter, everything seems to be working okay. I'm right now 150 meters away from myself. And we can see at this point, the transmitter is up to 250 milliwatts, which is max power. But again, everything seems to be working okay. I see quite a bit of fluctuation in the link quality, more than I would see with the Happy Model EP2, and also more than I would see if I was flying a normal receiver that has an external antenna. So it seems to be working okay, but at the same time, would I be happy flying a larger quad with this setup? Definitely not. But for a smaller quad, not too far away from myself, I, I'll be okay with this. And then I'm doing some more flying here, my usual path between these trees. Again, we're at 10 milliwatts, which is lowest power of the transmitter. Few more warnings, but nothing too concerning. The lowest I saw was minus 100 on the signal strength, the dBms. Okay, we're up to minus 107 at that point. So it's getting pretty close to the lowest signal this receiver can pick up. We'll call that the sensitivity, which is minus 112. But funny enough, I'm still seeing 10 milliwatts. I would think at that point it would call for more power, but it's not. So here we're up at 25 and we're heading back. So you can see where I'm standing right now. And as we land, we see lowest was 51%. Ooh, that's pretty bad. And RSSI DBM lowest was minus 108. So not the greatest. Now for the second test, I've got the module now set to max power of 500 milliwatt. This is my new beta FPV module. And I've moved to a different position. I want to see how this feels for just regular kind of a freestyle flight. So again, I start off with my perimeter flight. I'm seeing warnings again, but funny enough, still 10 milliwatts. Here I would think it would call for more power. Oh, it just did. We're up to 500 milliwatts at that point. And then we're slowly coming back down as I get closer to myself. So definitely not, not an ideal setup, but it works fine if you're in a bind or if you need the lightest receiver possible. But if you can carry an extra one gram of weight, I would go with the typical receiver that has an external antenna. Everything felt fine. So I was, I was flying here as I was doing some freestyle. I never felt that I wasn't in control, but looking at this in editing, it's getting pretty close to where I'd be comfortable flying this uh, longer distances. Again, everything seems fine as I fly it around. I can see most of the time we are in 10 milliwatt, which again, lowest power. And I can see link quality going up and down a little bit, uh, signal strength going up and down a little bit. And as I head back, I'm gonna try to land on my bag, success. So here we can see better than before, 70% uh, minimal link quality. The Beta FPV product page lists this receiver as a whoop receiver with a maximum range of 600 meters. So really this three inch quad here is not the proper use case for this receiver. I can run a external antenna right here very easily. This quad can carry an extra gram very easily. So that's what I would suggest for something like this. But this receiver does have its place and it did perform very well 
for the kind of use case I put it through. It was only when I looked at the flight footage and the OSD metrics, so the signal strength, the link quality, that I realized that it did struggle in certain areas where I saw it go up to full power, you know, 500 milliwatts or 250 milliwatts. So that tells me that it, it was really struggling to keep that uh, link quality up. Ultimately, this did not perform any better than the Happy Model EP2 I tested last year. So I think it's just the nature of these tiny antennas and what you can expect from them. This is still a very nice receiver. It upgraded the firmware fine. I like the fact that it's got the expected wiring layout. So all in all, went a bit kind of as expected, but still a very receive, very nice receiver that has its place out there in the market. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.